Welcome back, Cat from Scratch episode 12. Topic today is menuing, so file, edit, view, that kind of stuff, drop downs, things that happen when you click on the buttons. That's the plan today. So we're using, again, xwin, xlib, x11, whatever you want to call it. And there are a couple ways we can go about doing this. Right now, if you look at our, our old function, we just have a single render on the screen. The whole screen is a single window. Well, one option that we do have is to keep it that way. Keep the whole big red box as the render window and you know, draw our you know, body, whatever it is, inside there. And then on top of that, draw like little rectangles like so. Maybe we'll have a, a, a file bar button there, edit button, view button, help button, whatever. And we'll have drop down buttons that may pop up below those, you know, whatever you would expect in these, you know, in these drop downs, put them here. And that's fine. I mean, you can do that and have them automatically open and close when you click on them. That's fine. But when you're just drawing rectangles and, and text to the screen, which is not hard to do in, in this like in this way, it's going to be hard for us to determine what we're clicking on. So if we have a, a mouse cursor and moving around the screen like this, how do you know that you're on top of a button or not? Well, you're going to have to go through every button every time and see when you click if below you is a button. So you have to check these X coordinates and these Y coordinates and see if you're between them for every single one of these until you find where you are. And that's not really that efficient in, in my opinion. So I'm not gonna do that. There's actually a different way you can go about doing it, um, which makes a little bit more sense to me. And that is to break up our big window, our display maybe you would say, just just, just, a, just a sub window here, this this main window that we're using to render our you know software to the screen, and then break it into smaller pieces. So we'll have in, in orange here, we'll have our render window. And on the render window, we'll have you know, that drawing or whatever we're rendering to the screen. And then above this, maybe we'll have our, you know, our menu bar up here, maybe in yellow, just for the, just for the drawing here. Maybe we'll have a, uh, a, a button there. Maybe we'll have a button here. Maybe we'll have some drop downs here. Maybe we'll have some drop downs here all as different windows, like sub windows. And the advantage to this is a couple things. One, first and foremost is that cursor thing. You know, if I click on this, there's actually a way in, you know, XWin to detect what window we're clicking on. And that makes it super, super easy. And so that's what we're gonna take advantage of mostly, but there are other advantages here as well, like this hierarchy that could be of a lot of use for us in terms of how we're gonna store all this information. And so that's the plan for today. And so what I really want to have, let me just give an example really quick of what, we're, what I'm trying to do here in terms of these buttons. So just in this video, I want to have two sets of buttons. I want to have a, a query button. And for the query, I want to be able to query things like the number of nodes in the model, things like the number of faces in the model. Maybe we could have it have the number of, or maybe like the centroid of the part, things that have to just do with general queries. And then I also want to have a view, view button, just, just to keep things simple for this short video. Um, I want to have maybe uh, from positive x, y, and z, maybe from negative x, y, and z. You know, those six options there. Maybe I want to have an isometric option. Maybe you can do a diametric option. There's different ways you can view things. Maybe you want to change the perspective, you know. Right now we're doing a orthogonal transformation. Maybe you want to do a perspective, orthogonal perspective, whatever. You know, maybe you want to do any of those different ones. Maybe you want to change that. Those are options. That's kind of what I want to do today in this video is to have drop downs and then have each of these things be each of these you know things you click on correspond to a function. So this we already have a function to count the nodes. We have a function to count the faces. I'm probably not going to do this one just to keep it short. These will have to code up, changing the view. Um, but basically, if you can look at this really quickly, um, these functions here require the body as an input. You know, they require the body structure as an input to these functions. These don't. These functions down here, which is what we're getting, you know, about the view, they require like, you know, the look at and the look from and different types of characteristics of our, of our view frame axis. To in order to to render like you know these things as as a useful these the different inputs and so in order to have different inputs we'll have to use obviously function pointers to refer to these functions um, in a, on each button but we're also going to have to figure out a way that we can prototype these 
in C to you know either be a body function or to be a I don't know if a view function. So we'll have to address that in a few minutes. So just to get started really quick, um, you only have to change a few files. We have to change the main function and the two draw function or the two the true uh, draw files. So the draw header and the draw C file in the main. Um, file. I just want to change our test case a little bit. I don't want to work with this hot air balloon anymore. I want to work with um, just one of our primitives here, cube. And then we actually have a, um, a function for this. We have a make rectangular prism. And we pass in some parameters here. Uh, I think you pass in the, the first coordinate, 0 0.5. I want to have a unit um, unit cube here. So everything is going to be a size, a side of one, length, a side length of one, and then um, it'll be centered on zero zero here with this these inputs. Okay, then look at and look from. Keep it simple. I'm just going to change this to zero 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 one one one. Oh, one more thing. Um, this particular prism is not triangulated. It's just going to be a bunch of square faces. So, thankfully, we have, we have a function for that. We just have triangulate body cube. Done. That makes triangles of the body. At this point, we'll keep this draw style. We'll keep this draw body. We just got to change balloon to cube. So that's good. Now we can edit the draw dot h header. So in the draw h header, I want to do a couple things. So actually, only only two things. Um, I want to create a structure for these menu buttons. So menu button like that. And in this menu button, we have a bunch of parameters for each button, as you would expect. Each button has a length and a width. So we'll work with width of ints. We'll say int length, if I can spell. Int width. Now, I want to be able to store them you know, in a certain position. So they need length and width, but also need a location and space. So I'm going to store it in dx and dy. These are going to be distances from their parent element. So this blue, this blue, you know, rectangle is at zero zero on the yellow rectangle and this salmon one is at I don't know like 50 zero on the yellow rectangle so th that's like where it is on the parent element dx and dy in pixels now I want to store in um, not how, how many children there are so we'll say num sub buttons so for example this teal button has three sub buttons and same with the salmon one has three purple purple buttons we also want to have a um, well you could put this as a bool, but I'm gonna put it as an int because I was having some trouble earlier today making this kind of stuff work with um, with not aligned data types. So I'm just gonna give everything an int if, if I can. So int uh, show children, that should work. And then now we need to be able to store a couple different things. First is an X text item. I'll talk about this a little bit later. Basically, this is how we're going to store um, the text. So where it says query or count nodes or count faces or change view. That will be stored in a text item and X actually provides this for us, the xlib. Oh, speaking of xlib, I have to include xlib because we're going to be referring to X text item. So we'll say uh, include x11 xlib.h. I think that's right. X text item, text item, sure. We'll also need a couple more things. We'll need the window, because obviously these are all going to be windows. That's the whole point of this, was making them all the window. So we'll store the window. Um, and now we need what's called the graphics context. These are basically ways you can store like the colors of different things. So we want this to be you know gray like up here, and different types of font color, different border colors, whatever. You could put those in a graphics context. So we'll have a couple of those. We'll have graphics context for the fill. And we'll have graphics context for the um, border call that board, and one for the font. Um, now comes for the actual functions, so like the, the callbacks or whatever, like the, the function pointers. And for that, remember there's two different options here. We can have a function that takes in a body or functions that take in these other parameters here. We don't need to even need this, just those two. And for that, um, we have to actually use a union. I've never used that before in my life, but now it's a good time to start using a union. Basically, the union just stores um, two different types of values in the same memory location. So we need two different types of functions here. They're going to be um, just function pointers. They're going to return void. And we need a body function that takes in, like I said before, a struct body. And then we need a view function that takes in, I guess, just those, those uh, three um, 
element floats, two of them. So we'll say float three, float one being look at, one being look from. And what else? I guess we have to name this something. We'll call that func. And oh, well obviously we don't know which one we're using. So for any, any given button, we have, we have to know whether or not it's going to be a body function to pass in the body or a view function to pass in the view. So we have to store that here. So I'll say int which func. That'll be just one or two. If it's one, it's this one, and two if it's this one. And lastly, the last thing I want to store in the structure is the, um, the children. So we'll say struct menu button sub buttons. So this will be a, an array of pointers to the other buttons that are children of this of this given parent button. So the blue one has will have three elements and they'll all be in this array. So that's that for this. We've we finished our header file. Now let's go to our um, draw.c. Now this one a couple things to change in this one. Um, we'll put all our functions right here so we can we can reference them. So the first function we need to create is a function that returns a menu button, just like a constructor. So I'll be struct menu button pointer. It'll return a pointer to the button. We'll call it create menu button. And we'll pass in all the parameters I just mentioned. Um, so let's see, we need int width, int, hold on. Get rid of that for a second, we don't need that right now. Um, int width, int height, int dx, int dy. We need a couple of RGB values. Remember, we have this function from last time that stores, uh, you know, in one int these RGB coordinates. So we'll say int R RGB background, int RGB border, int R RGB font. Now we'll need some ints for the whether or not you know we're storing the buttons and how many we have. So num sub buttons, how many buttons? Int show children. If I recall, then we had um, now for the x text item we have to give it a, a, a care array of text and they have to tell it how many is it an int? I think it's an int. Int n cares. That's how many characters are in this character array. I'll get into how that works in, in a little bit. And uh, then we also have to have a font. So font, I'll talk about that again later. This is pretty challenging actually, but it's actually easy to implement, but hard to understand what's going on. Um, I'll get into that in a minute. And then we also need to pass in the display to know where we're putting this on the screen. So the display pointer disp, and then a, a window for what window is the parent window. and Lastly, we'll need those function pointers. So we'll say int which func and then uh, was it void func, I guess. I've done this before, but it's kind of hard to remember what's going on when I do it, you know, live. So in here, we have to first malloc the amount of space and we have to populate all these um, all the, the fields in that structure. So I'll do that off camera and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I did most of it just to show what I did really quick. Um, this is the malloc first off. There's um, seven ints, one text item, one window, three graphics contexts, one void pointer. Um, that's to the to the function. And then this number of sub buttons times pointers to the sub button. So the, how many children buttons are there? So it's gonna vary based off which button we, we create different, different size of the structure. So then I just have the, obviously all the ints defined here with height, dx, dy, sub buttons, which func. Then the text item. So text item is pretty much what we're going to draw, like right on top of the buttons. So that we have text and characters and then a font. I'll talk about that font later. We store that in window. We create a simple window. This is actually making the window at dx and dy from the parent window with width and height, this uh, foreground and background color. Uh, and then we have these uh, graphics contexts for the font, the border, and the fill. Um, we create with X set foreground to use that to create the actual color. So we have RGB font border and background as inputs, put those in the structure and then we return the, the button. Last thing here is the actual function itself, like the, the callback or whatever you want to call it, like the, like the function pointer that was going to execute when we click on the button. So 
that's going to vary. So based off which what value we have for which function, this function pointer will have a different different value. So we could say if which func is one, then uh, menu button func. What is it? It's body func equals func. So basically, we're saying this input function here, which is a, a void pointer to this input function, this this uh, yeah this func input function here, that will be stored in the in the union that we have called function in data structure in the body function element of that union. So that's how that will work. Then if it's not one, so uh, else if which func equals two. Then we have a menu button func view func equals func. So it's the different type data type. And then lastly, if there's no no function, I guess we'll probably store null. So we'll say if uh, else we'll say uh, menu button func. And this you pick either one. It's it's the same memory address. So body func equals null. This basically tells us um, which function to use in the you know, in the actual button, when we click on it, this will give us, you know, this function in in this prototype versus this prototype. Because there's, diff there's different parameters, if you recall. Um, this one takes in a body as an input. This one takes in two sets of floats. So that's why we have that. So that should be good for this, this structure, except for one last thing I didn't do. Um, we have one more helper function over here. And that will be a, a, a void function populate sub buttons because I didn't set those up yet. So I want to make that a separate function. So populate sub buttons as input, we will take um, the structure to populate. So structure menu button, menu button. And inputs will just pass in an array. So struct menu button sub buttons array. In this function, we'll just have to loop over and, and, and fill this out. So we'll say for int i equals zero, i less than menu button num sub buttons. And we will uh, just fill this out menu button sub buttons i equals sub buttons. That's good, and then just return, I guess, just for for fun. Okay, so that's that. That's sort of everything we have to do just to populate these uh, these menu buttons and, and and create them. Now the question is, um, what are we creating? Like, how do we set up this kind of a structure here? We have to be able to pass in values, so we'll make a function for that, and that will be sort of like. Um, I guess we'll call it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll return a structure to we'll return a structure to like the, the the parent. So we'll say struct menu button, and we'll call this uh, populate menu items. And it will take in just a couple things as a parameter, just things we need just from the top level down. And we have to pass through. If you recall, we have to pass in display and window here. So we'll we'll pass in um, display and window here. So we'll display. I believe that's a pointer. And uh, window win, and then we'll pass in a font. Again, I'll talk about that in a second. Just, keep, just bear with me for a few minutes while we we'll set this all up. Um, so in here, I'm just going to take a few minutes aside and, and put this stuff in, and I'll explain what I did after I finished. Okay, I'll see you in a few. Okay, this should work. So basically, I have um, I call create menu button on a few things. First things first. Let me show the drawing again. I call it for the main menu, that's the yellow one. Then I'm calling it for the query button, that's gonna be blue. And the view button, that's gonna be the same in color. I'm passing in obviously the coordinates and the length and the width in space. Um, okay, no problem. And I'm passing in these colors. This color here is, is actually like a light gray, kind of like the one in the in like the paint software here. Black and black for the border and the font. Um, the main menu is going to have no words on it, zero letters, but the other two are going to say query and view respectively. This is how many letters in each. Font, display, parent window. 
Oh, you know what? It's not gonna matter actually, but this should, this could be um, the menu window. I'll, I'll, I might go look at that later. That might be uh, important if not, um, maybe change window. I'll take, take, take a look later at that. There's no, there's no functions for these. There's no like callback for those functions. Then we're passing it into populate sub buttons in, so in order to fill those, these two buttons into the main menu. Then we repeat again with the sub buttons. So here we have uh, count nodes and count faces. That, those will be in this, the teal button, the query button. So we'll have a count node and count face option. Um, and then in the salmon option, we'll have these functions here. We'll have a view from positive x, positive y, positive z, negative x. Oh, I forgot to change those. Change those now. Good thing I caught that. Neg y, neg z, and then isometric. And so basically, um, it's the same thing again. I'm just calling with the, with function pointers, like uh, to each of those functions. Now, the functions that I that I just created for this are here. So these are like this is how you make a function pointer with different um, input parameters. So this is the view functions. So we can create a, like these functions here as a in this way. However, we, we have to be able to declare these first off. So these have to be declared above and then we can do this by passing the address to the function into like this kind of a pointer. We have this for both the view functions and also the body functions. So let's go above and let's make those let's make those functions that we that we're calling. So the first function to call is very simple. It's going to be print uh, node count. That's the one I just called. That takes input the struct body, and then it simply is going to print f something like uh, query count nodes equals percent d. Put some spaces in here. That'll make it look nice. And we'll just simply call the function that we already made in a previous video. We have something called count nodes pass in body, and we're done. Then we can uh, return here. This is print nodes. What about print faces? Well, it's going to be very different. Not close at all. Uh, print face count. Quint, uh, print count faces. Count faces. Awesome. Now comes for the, the view type stuff. Um, so this is going to be a, a bit of a problem. Um, I'll, let me just do the easy part first. So we'll make some functions. There'll be void functions again. So void uh, view from positive x. We'll take in floats, uh, look at. We'll pass in look from first. That's what makes more sense. And look at. In these functions, uh, very simple. We just have to change the value in look from. Remember, this is a pointer. It's pointing to the first element of look from. So, look from zero. This is going to be the x coordinate where we're looking from. Obviously, hold on. Let me just do this. X, y, and z. Obviously, if we're looking from positive x, the x coordinate is going to be positive one, and then these are going to be zero and zero. But now we need a way to. Like recompute the look the look frame in a kind of like a modular way. I don't want to have to program it in each one of these functions. So let's make a new function here called uh, recompute view frame, and we'll pass in um, the same input. So float look from size three, float geez look at size three. And we'll create that above here. And that will be another void. So let's make that function. So the logic here is going to be very much like the logic from previously. Um, let, me, let me go down and get that. And this is actually a good opportunity to change something. Here we go. These, these lines right here. This is largely what we have to do. 
um, by computing the dframe axes. Once again, we did this previously in our draw function, but we have to be able to recompute that whenever we click one of these buttons, obviously. And so we have a U3 and U1. I'm going to actually bring out U1 and U2 for a reason. So U1 size 3, U2 size 3. And so here's why I want to do this. Um, We, because here's, here's a, actually, there's actually a problem with the way we did it before. In, in the previous video, we had a way to render to the screen um, in in a very like orthogonal perspective, in an orthogonal way, where we didn't really care so much about the um, where we're looking from. And this algorithm that I that I put together for generating these look frames, these, these view frame axes, it works for every combination of looking at something except exactly on the z-axis, and. And then we never had a problem with that up until now, but because now we have these functions here that view along the positive and negative z-axis, we're gonna to have to actually address this because this sort of functionality does not work if you're parallel with the z-axis. So we have to create a new type of um, new, new logic here. So the first thing we have to do is we'll say if, so we'll say if it's not parallel, so if if the x and y components of of u three, which is how we're looking, are you know non-zero, so we'll say u u three zero, or where's the or button u three one. So if either x or y components are non-zero, we do the old thing. This is the old thing. That that works no problem with with the old the old stuff. However, if that's not the case. We have to do something else. And by the way, this is not going to work, of course, because stupid. U3 1 is this. U3 uh, U1 1 is this. U1 2 equals this. Uh, U2 0 equals this. U2 1 equals this. And then U2 3 or 2 equals this. Yeah, stupid. I hate that. Now, else, very simple. Um, we have to just hard code an, uh, an alternative for this because it's not going to compute these like cross products properly if we're if we're you know if we have parallel to the, the z-axis. So. Uh, U1 is going to be, I guess well, the, the U1 is actually which, which way is right. So I guess the be best way to do this is just say that right is right. So we'll say 100 zero, zero is uh, the coordinate for to the right. 100. Zero, zero. And the coordinate up, you'd expect it's going to be 010, zero, zero, right? However, that's not quite right because we do have a, hold up. U2 1 equals something, and then U2 2 equals 0. So basically, we're going to hard code that the right direction be the x axis, and that the up direction be the z component. The, the, the same the same number as z component it's going to be it's going to be a uh, you know if we're if we're parallel with z z is going to be one direction so this will change sign and give us the right um, orientation for our, our view frame I think u two zero one and two yeah zero u three two zero yeah that, that's right to me and actually now that we have this I can copy this down below we can just reuse this down below because that that did not work. Paste. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna finish coding up these uh, these different view from positive x, positive y, positive z routines, and I'll be back in a few moments. Okay. As you can see, I doubled this. I copied this function a few times. View from positive x at one zero zero. Now we have positive y, which is zero one zero. Positive z, which is zero zero one. Negative x is negative one zero zero, negative y is zero negative one zero, negative z is zero zero negative one, and then lastly isometric is one one one. Very simple. Then I went through and I, I realized that we could do one thing very easily. 
if we use global variables, we can actually make this function work a little bit better. So um, we were computing these u1, u2, and u3 uh, values, like uh, sort of float arrays um, in this function based off what we clicked here in the, in the, in the drop down menu. And then uh, we created this view frame for this, these coordinates. And uh, at this point, we can set these values to u1 new, u, u2 new, and u3 new, which are what we use in the actual like render loop. However, it's like I said before, if we do it in a global sense, it would be really nice. So I'm gonna make a global variable for this um, and just use that. So we'll say float u1 new, three, u2 new, three, and u3 uh, new, three. Okay, that should be good. Now I can actually go, go down here where we're, um, let me get rid of this white space or black space. Go down to where we're actually um, defining u, u1, 2, and u1, u2, and u3 new and comment that out because we don't need that anymore. See like this. Oh, and while we're here, if you look here, um, GL front face clockwise. This was what we made in the previous video to render that hot air balloon. But actually in, in my implementation for the way we're making the software, the the face loop is actually counterclockwise. So I'm going to comment this out and put it counterclockwise. And now that I see that, that's a good, good thing to change. I think it will still work, but just for the time being, I want this to be accurate to what we're actually doing in this, in this uh, platform. So counterclockwise is for the front face. That's fine. And now comes the question is how we're going to actually implement everything we just did in the actual draw body function. And it's not really that hard. Um, you can see we've we changed our reframe axis here um, as, as before. So we have our window here and we have a display. And this window is our simple window. This is our, our, our big red window on the right that you can see. Now we also would like though, to break apart the render into a smaller window, the smaller orange window. Cause right now the render is in the red window. We want the render to be in the, the orange window here. So to do that, not hard. Um, I'm just gonna copy this again and we'll create a render window and it will be a member of the window. It'll be a child of, of the, the main window and the render window will it will start at 0, 020. So we're going to give 20 pixels of, 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 of space if, you know, for the yellow window here, for the menu window. And after 20 pixels, we'll go right into the size of our, uh, of our render, which will be a full width and then everything but 20 pixels in height. The colors, I don't think matter all that much. I think I'll just leave what it is because um, we're just going to render over it so it doesn't really make a difference. And honestly, I think that's like the biggest change to make in terms of that. We do have to map that window. So where it says map window, we have to map the render window to the display. So render win. Then that store name is fine. Um, okay, so I guess here's a good time to talk about the font. So. Now fonts work differently on different machines. The, the way we're going to work with it here in, in, in like XWin is that we're just going to load a query font. And on my machine, there's like a billion fonts. You probably have the same fonts as me, to be honest, but you may not. And so if you don't, and it doesn't work, you can, you can change what we're going to put in the quotes here. But in all honesty, it should just work out of the box. This is a very common font. We're going to use Lucida Sans size 12, which is very very common. So what you do is you create x font structure, x font struct, we'll call that font struct, and we can um, basically use that function I mentioned, x load query font. And the, the idea is that on display you can just query this font and you pass it in. You can say fixed. I think fixed works, but it doesn't have every sort of, it doesn't work for everything and it's also fixed font size. So that will work on any machine, but for us we're going to use Lucida Sans 12. So it's going to look up the font and get everything about it from the machine. And then we'll uh, we'll just grip the menu rent the menu buttons now. So we'll say struct menu button. And while we'll call our um, 
populate menu items and we'll pass in the parameters which were display window and was it font I didn't remember if it is the font we pass in the font struct FID that gives us the ID of the font and then uh, last thing is we have to map that menu, that, that menu window because here we've, we've mapped the red window to the screen. We've mapped the orange window to the screen, you can see. We have to also map the yellow window to the screen. So we'll say x map window, disp is the screen, and we're gonna pass in menu button window. So the, the, the parent, the first, the first menu button window will be passed as the minute window to map here. And now comes the actual rendering. So we can actually render these main ones are out of the loop because they're not going to be in like, overlapping this orange render render loop window. So we can actually render these two out of the loop, at least to, to begin with, at least we should. And so we'll say, uh, not font, for int i equals zero, i less than menu button uh, num sub buttons, plus plus. So we're going to loop over all the sub buttons in that in this big yellow container here, which is going to be just two for us, but when we add more, it will be you know five, six, seven, or eight. So we're going to loop through, and we're going to we're going to draw them to the screen. So X map window, display menu button, uh, sub buttons, I window. So we're going to map. All the children basically like this. So all the, all the children are going to have a pair. Map means make make a pair basically. So all the windows that correspond to the blue and the salmon are going to appear. Just these two will appear. And now we have to actually draw on them because we just mapped the window, but we haven't drawn anything yet. So we have to do uh, x fill rectangle. Uh, that will make sort of the background color. We have to do x draw rectangle. That will draw like the border, and then we have to x draw text and that will draw the um, the actual like words so query and view to these boxes so I'll do that and I'll be back in a minute okay so I put these together um, we're filling a rectangle on display um, the window that corresponds to the, the actual button that we're drawing uh, we're gonna pass in the context for the fill the border and the font respectively now the fill and the border are gonna start at zero zero you know, the top left of the box. So we'll stop here, to top, start at the top left. Um, now the width and height for the, the background are gonna be full, you know, width and height, but the background for the border is gonna be one pixel less because I wanna be able to see the border on both sides. Um, and and that's, that's all that, that matters for those two functions. And then for the text, draw text, and we're passing in the font color and then we're gonna put it at 815. So we're gonna give it a little bit of space from the edges so we can actually kind of center the, center the words a little bit better in the, in the, the boxes. And then uh, pass the text item from the button and there's one text item. So that's all you have to do. So honestly, that's, that's it. If we run it right now, we would get the, we would get the orange box, yellow box, obviously the red box, the blue box and the, and the salmon box. We wouldn't get these green and the purple ones yet. So those we have to actually do inside the um, the render loop. So that's the plan now. I'm actually going to copy this because that was going to be very useful in a minute. So let's let's go down into the render loop. In here, and so I'm going to paste it here just for the time being. But we have to do a few different things. This video is going to kind of long. I'll do them right now, and I'll be back in a minute, and I'll show you what I did. Be right back. Okay, I'll do this last part live because I think it's important. So I want the logic to be kind of different than what it is right now. So right now, um, if we click anywhere on the screen, it automatically goes into these events. I want to break up the events by what we're clicking on. So if we click on the render window, I want it to do the render events. If we click on the, the menu bar, I want to do the menu bar event. So basically, I want to say, um, I want to have like an if statement here after this event. And I want to break apart these events based on what kind of category they are. So I'll say um, if event x button sub window equals render window. 
I guess that's that's it. Then we'll do these events here. These are like kind of like scrolling in and out, dragging the mouse. Else, we'll do these events, which I just coded up, and I will explain them in detail. So it's a very similar logic to what happened before. Let me just show you. So basically, so if we're not on the render window and we are on the, the menu buttons, I want to loop through the menu buttons. So loop through the, you know, the these on the list here in, on the yellow bar. Then we'll say, uh, if we've clicked on that particular button, so that's what this line says here, you know, and, and it's a button press. So if we click on that particular their window, then we can uh, look at if, if the windows are showing already. So if the, the children are already showing, so if show children, we're going to unmap those windows and turn off show children, which is a, just a variable we had to keep track of whether or not the, the, these, these green bars and purple bars are actually showing. So that will be set to zero. And if those are not showing, we map them. So we do show them, we fill them like before, we draw them like before, we add text like before, and we just draw to the screen those those objects. So when you click on the purple, or click on this blue button, the green bars will come and go based off whether or not they're there or not. So that's this, that's very simple, just a little bit of, you know, verbosity there. And then the second part here is um, a little bit interesting. So this is actually how we're going to go through the sub buttons. So you can see there's actually like a double loop here. So we're looping through the the children I and J. So we're looping, say so you clicked on this blue one and these green buttons are now showing. Now we're looping through these and we're seeing, you know, uh, what they do. So basically, uh, if they have a, a function value to be one, that means they're a body function, we can just execute that. So that's what this line here says, execute the function corresponding to the button that you clicked, if it's a body function. If it's a view function, that means if the, this value here is two, then we're eva evaluating this, this view function function with those two parameters here, look from and look at, which are both floats of length three. And then we're, this here is just a little bit of, um, a little bit just of uh, de defining u1 to be equal to the previous value, or equal to the new value, not the previous value. So we can kind of just keep things going and let it update in real time. So that's good. Um, this should work. So basically now at this point, this new logic here, it, it renders these green and purple bars if you click the blue and salmon bars. And it also means that if you have, if you click, on these green and purple bars, these functions are executed, the ones that we encoded already in, you know, in that data structure. So this is honestly, I'm, I'm sure this is not going to work. So we're going to have to go back and, uh, and fix this, I think, but I'll, I'll, I'll humor myself and uh, we'll uh, try to compile that. No, of course not. So what did I do wrong? I'll bear it back. I'll figure this out. Okay, uh, a, a few things. Um, just a few things actually. One one really bad thing and then a couple small things. So oops. Oops, that's not right. Where is it? It's here. So yeah, this needs to be the address of this text item. Then um, in this line here I forgot to define the menu button that was just calling this function with nothing. That was making a whole a whole fuss. Um, then also up here, I kept the the word float in in this, which does not does not work. I mean, so you can't do that. So fix those. And then lastly, um, looks like I called this length. It's, it's supposed to be height. That's <laughs> stupid. So yeah, no big deal. Um, let's see if it works now. Okay, it, it's doing something. Hold on, let me see. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so it renders now. Query works, so hold up. So if I click query count nodes, I get eight, good. Count faces, I get 12, good. That, that makes sense. And then view, I can view only two options. Why is that? 
Oh, I know why that is. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. It's because I'm dumb, that's why. This number should be seven. Ah, uh, there we go. Copy and paste. Actually, hold on, one more thing. So let me show you what I changed. Um, so this stupid thing here, <laughs> swap buffers should be render window, not the window, because we changed the window that's rendering. Now it's the render window that's rendering, not the, not the full window. Now it's the orange frame, not the red frame. And also I have to change um, uh, this. So the GLX makes current. So this is the current OpenGL context is now the render, render window, not the regular window. Those two things made the rendering work. And now I have to just comment out one thing, debugging. Where is it? Here. And we're done. Recompile. Now it should all work. So query, count nodes, eight count faces, 12. View, oh, here we go. I can view positive X, positive Y, yep. Positive Z, negative X, negative Y, negative Z. They're all the same except for negative Z. You can see I screwed that one up when I coded up the <laughs> whatever. And then isometric, so it's pretty nice, huh? And I kind of like how the, the view menu stays open, you know? It's kind of cool how it just stays open. Obviously, this is a problem, <laughs> but uh, I kind of like how it stays open. So let's say you wanted to like measure the area of a certain face. I could just say query, you know, measure face area, and then click on a face and face, face. A lot easier than having to go through the stupid menu again, you know, especially if it's a bunch of like drop downs. Like imagine it was like query, face data, face normal, you know, vector or whatever. So it would be a lot of work to keep going through. I kind of like how it stays open. That's kind of cool. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I just want to say one last thing. This this video, I looked for many, many hours and days and even weeks trying to find a resource like this. There is none. There There is none. Like, I gained all this information from this video just by reading the manual and it took me a very, very long time. So if you like this, then definitely like keep this link somewhere because this video is definitely a one of a kind resource that you're never gonna find another one. So anyway, thanks for watching.